a regional dust storm has dimmed the sunlight across a large swath of the Martian surface. For nuclear-powered Perseverance, it's business as usual. For the solar-powered InSight lander, it may be the last straw. On this episode of Mars Guy. Mars has incredibly large dust storms. Here's the United States for scale. They're most common during the Southern Hemisphere summer, which is now, but they don't look like this. The winds on Mars just aren't that strong with an atmosphere that's only about 1% the density of Earth's atmosphere. Still, dust can be lifted into billowing clouds near the surface and high up into the atmosphere as a thin haze far from the source. This dust haze is evident at the Perseverance site in the way that shadows look in the landscape. Here's a panorama taken just as the dust storm was getting started thousands of kilometers away, and here's Mars Guy for scale. Notice the contrast between shadowed and sunlit surfaces. This is especially apparent on Kodiak Mesa, an eroded remnant of the river delta. This same view toward the end of the dust storm has a different look. The shadows are very muted, and the scene has a redder tint. That's because the dust haze evens out the skylight and emphasizes red wavelengths. This lighting actually helps to show off the tilted forset beds of the delta deposit. Meanwhile, over at the home of the InSight lander, the situation is a lot more grim. Those shiny new solar rays produced nearly 5,000 watt-hours of power per sol at the start of the mission, but over the years, they've collected dust dragging the power output down to less than 500 watt-hours per sol. Now with the dusty haze over InSight obscuring the sun, the power has dropped to a meager 275 watt-hours per sol, forcing the team to shut off the key science instrument, a seismometer, for measuring Mars quakes. The robotic arm was already retired in May to save power. If InSight can get through this latest dust storm haze, it could possibly fire up the seismometer again and maybe last until January, but another dust storm could mean the end of it. Still, it has well outlasted its primary mission lifetime of one Mars year, nearly two Earth years, getting another almost two years of bonus science. And yes, there are ways that could have been engineered to clean off dusty solar arrays, but all of them would have required additional mass, power, and complexity to implement, and ultimately more money than the strict cost cap allowed for a NASA Discovery class mission. This essentially was a rebuild of the successful Phoenix lander, which allowed for different science instruments and not much more. But the design as built and operated has led to new insights into the interior structure of Mars in a way no previous mission has done before. 